Hey, my name is Phil from LegitMarketingReviews.com. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at a feedback tool for website designers and developers called Project Huddle. Now in this Project Huddle review, I wanna show you exactly what Project Huddle does, how it actually works, and by the end of the video, you should know if Project Huddle is right for you. And just to let you know, if you wanna help support the channel, I have left a link in the description, and that link's also gonna take you to any promos that are currently running. So first of all, what is Project Huddle? It is a WordPress plugin that once installed allows you to get clients to give live feedback on websites that you've created. Now this works for not only live websites, you can also use it for PDF documents. So if you wanna create a mock-up or wireframe first, you can easily do so with this. So instead of trying to tell you what Project Huddle is, I'm actually gonna jump behind the screen now and show you how it works. Okay, so first of all, let's start here at the Project Huddle website. What I wanna do is run through some of the features, also the pricing, and then we'll go into a live demo site that I've created. To give you the quickest possible rundown of what Project Huddle actually does, you can imagine that this here is a web page you've created or a PDF that you've created a mock-up for. Let's just say your client comes through and he's like, hey, I like it what you've done so far, but can we do something here? Instead of them trying to describe where exactly they wanna to point to, you can actually just click on it and they can type in a comment here. Can we do something with this space? And then what they can do is click on add comment. And then when you go on your dashboard, you have got a little pin where they want the adjustments. Now I believe you can put as many comments and pins as you want around the entire site. You can do it on multiple different pages as well. So that's sort of the basic technology that we're gonna be using with Project Huddle. Now it goes quite in depth and I'll go through those in a moment. But first of all, let's go through some of the features that are included. You have here things like uh, image mockups. So if you had say wireframes uh, for PDF or sketches or things like that, you can actually use the same sort of features on top of the image. And this also works for live websites and I'll show you how that works in a moment. Now, in terms of features, they have some pretty cool ones here. These two are obviously my favorite, white label. So if you are a web development agency, you can make it look like it's your own personal software that they are using. It looks very professional and it just makes you that look that little bit better. Then you have here the client approval and sign off. So once you've actually gone through, the clients looked at the website, they're completely happy with everything on top of it. They can actually approve it and it has a sort of terms and conditions type of contract. So it feels like they're actually signing it off for real, right? So it's a pretty professional feeling type of uh, platform, right? A type of experience for the user. Now, if we just come up to the pricing before we go into the demonstration, there is three different types of pricing that they have. First of all, they have the regular for $109. They have the professional for $139 and the ultimate for $599. Main differences here, uh, the regular and the professional are paid yearly. However, the ultimate is a one-time price and it has unlimited numbers. Now, just to let you know the difference difference between numbers. It says here one dashboard site. Basically what the dashboard site means is if you have an agency website and you install the project huddle on a subdomain, I'll show you what I've done in a moment, but basically I've got a subdomain for design dot and then my website. So that means it's that one installation there. It doesn't mean you can only have one client site, you can have multiple client sites on top of it. Now you can have three dashboard sites if you wanted to have more, maybe you've got sub agencies inside of it, maybe you've got different parts of the agency if you've got a big one. You can have up to three on top of here. The main differences with professional though is you get to have file uploads within your comments. If you remember the comments from before, you can actually add files on top of it as well. Plus you also get PDF support so you can upload PDFs and also get feedback on there. Then finally, we've got the ultimate. It's just basically ult uh, unlimited of everything, unlimited dashboards, files, PDF support, everything like that. So it's a very powerful thing. The main one, uh, thing once again is it's a one-time price. So you'll only be paying for the software once and you'll get all updates forever. So that's it. So let's get stuck into it. So first of all, I've created a site. This is actually, if I bring it down, like I mentioned earlier, I created a subdomain called design. Now they recommend you actually have it on a subdomain and not on the client's site or on a live website. Reason being is you can keep everything in house and it doesn't affect anything like email deliverability, anything like that if you have it all in one portal. Now I've actually gone ahead and created this login template using Elementor and I'll show you that in a moment. But what you can do once you have your logins and once you actually log in is come to your WordPress dashboard, come to Project Huddle, and then over in Overview, we have our overview of our entire 
um, sort of design business. Now at the moment, I haven't got any comments or anything going, that's completely fine. I have, however, put in a couple of websites just to show you how it works. Just one actually, it's this one here. So I'll show you that in a moment. Then we've also got some mockups that I've put in, which is um, these two here, right? So it's a PDF test, this one's actually a PDF. There's also a website, which is my personal website for this brand. And then we can go ahead and play with them. So let's get started. So first of all, we will start with the website. Now I want you just to visualize if you are a web development agency, when you create the first versions of the client's website that you wanna to propose to them, this was what it will be. It will be installed on a different domain, so it's not on their live domain. And if you visit it, you can't actually see anything, right? Nothing's happening. But once you actually log in into the uh, dashboard of this website and then come to the front page, you'll see this little welcome bar here. And basically what happens is this is popped up. Now this is my custom branding as they mentioned earlier, which I'll go through in a little bit. But essentially what happens from here is your client will come in, they will log into their administration panel. And what they will see is this page here and this little dashboard. So they would come through and just be like, okay, what do I like about this page? What needs working on? For example, if they saw this here, they could put a comment and just be like, hey, um, what is this about is something broken, right? And press add comment. And now it has got a one that sticks on there. Now, just to let you know, once again, on if you're just visiting the site as a non-admin, you can't see anything and you can choose who gets to comment based on the settings that you choose once you actually install it. So if you only want administrators to see it or if you only want authors, subscribers, things like that, you can even leave it open so anyone can obviously um, comment, but you don't wanna do that. You just wanna choose who you want to comment. Mine is basically the administrators of the website. So if we come back, they can come down, they can put all the additions that they want inside of here. Let's just say um, they wanna comment on this particular one as well. Here is another piece of code, right? And then maybe this picture is wrong. Can this be changed? Right, add those. Now what you'll see is at the bottom of the screen, we now have comments three. So on this particular page here, we've got three comments. We've also got the time. We've also got things like the location, the screenshot, what device they've come from and what resolution they're looking and also um, if you wanna to reply to them, right? So this is pretty handy. And the good thing about here as well is you can start assigning these. So if for example, you had a creative person that's looking after the photos, you could tag this person inside of here. So be like, hey, um, can you have a look at this? Now this person's been tagged. And if you had a developer, you could do like the same sort of thing here. Tag them on there and now that's done. Now you'll notice there's a few things at the top here. We've got comments, we've also got pages, and we've also got activity. So if we go to activity, you can see all of the changes from anyone in the entire sort of program what's been happening and everything like that. And you can choose it based on all pages or just this page. So if you wanted to narrow it down, we've also got pages here. It currently says no comments, but once you actually reload this page, it's going to update. So that's how it really works. It's nice and simple. And what we can do is once again, you can scroll to pages from here, activity, and you can also hide the comments if you just wanna see what it looks like. Now you can also collapse this box if you wish, make it nice and closed. You can also move it around the screen. So it's really easy to use. It's not a hard tool at all. So what I'm gonna do is reload this page and show you the pages um, comments just to give you an idea of what it will look like. So here it is, once again, pages. Now you can see three and you can quickly go to the page to see how it works. And another few features, if you need to change the name or the domain, this is just based off scraping from the uh, metadata on top of the page that you're scraping from. So if, for example, this was your um, temporary domain, you could change it just to make it look nice. And if you wanted to quickly navigate to particular comments, you could click on view location and it'll take you directly there just to show you another one as well. So it'll take you and scroll you down to the page. And if you choose to take the professional plan, you'll also notice we have here attach a file, which is where you can actually add files. If you're just on the first plan, then you actually won't get this feature. So now we've got a few comments on this page. Let's go back to the dashboard and to websites and let's see what's going on inside of here. So you can click on edit 
And now we actually come to our dashboard, we can see the list of comments going on. We can see also the pages um, and the comments on the right. And we've also got latest activity also on the right. And then we also have the ability to send emails. Now this is great and you get to choose when you want your emails to be sent when you first sign up to the platform and install it. But what you can do is if you worked on the email throughout the day, you had a bunch of changes that you wanted to add, you could go ahead and send an email to the client to show them the amount of changes for the day. Or if it's your team, you can actually send it to yourself so you can see what's been done. And then we also have a little settings tab if you want here. It has here approvals. So we wanna enable approvals for this project. What that means is if you are submitting approval for your page that you've changed, then you can give it to the client. The client can then approve it or unapprove it if they need further changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And it's been updated. Now I'm gonna show you what the tasks look like, right? So we've got the tasks here. We've got the the information, if we click on it, it's gonna show you any replies that are going on inside of it. Plus we also have details. It's gonna show you a screenshot, browser size, all that sort of stuff that we saw before. But what we can do inside of here is basically if this was, can this be changed? You could come through and you could change it. It's gonna list your activity and then you can go ahead and click resolved, right? Now what this means is it's gonna show the client that this particular problem has been resolved and it's being ready for approval. So let's just say we resolved everything. You can see it's disappeared off our tasks list. So let's just say we're gonna go and approve everything. Okay, approve the last one and then come back to the actual page itself and click on reload. This is what's going to show. So since we have put that approval setting inside of here, we've now got an approval bar. If we click on pages, you'll also see that there are three resolved sort of issues that have been done. Now, if the client's happy, once again, they can come through, they can click on approve if they are, they can also comment if they want adjustments done again, but let's just say they're happy. We're gonna have this little thing here. Are you sure you wanna approve this page? And they can go here, click on approve, and now this page has been approved. Now we click on the little buttons again, you can see this particular page has been done. So it's giving you like a little sort of checklist basically of what needs to be done, what comments are having issues with, what needs to be changed, and also what the client is happy with. So it's really cool because it keeps everything in house. It keeps everything super easy to navigate. You see exactly what the client wants done, where and where they want things to be changed, and it just makes the entire process more streamlined. Now you can do this with every page of the entire website. It's so quick and easy, trust me. When you're trying to navigate without this sort of software, you're just guessing most of the time or trying to navigate based on text. So that is the live website editing. Now, if we come to the dashboard, I'll quickly show you the mockups just to show you what those are as well. So if I come to the PDF test, click on edit, right? We can see inside of here, we've got just a Canva graphic I've actually downloaded and uploaded. But if I click on view image, this is what's going to happen. Now you can see we've got a branded logo. Once again, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. We've also got what it is and also the name of it. So you can have multiple pictures inside of this one project. This is just a test. And if you come through, same exact thing once again, you can click on it, you can leave a comment. Hey, can we make this color gray, right? Press add comment. Now that's been added. Same thing here, you can come through. If you click on the wrong spot, don't worry, you can um, easily change it and everything. So you can do it just like you did with a live website, but on a PDF. So this is perfect if you're creating wireframes. Um, it also works on images, not just PDFs, but it's pretty cool, especially if you have documents, um, because you can do the same thing for documents. If it's a legal document, you could say, hey, this clause is wrong. Everything like that can this um, be reworded please all right add comment same thing again if we click on the comments comments pop up here we've also got activity and then if we've got more than one image you can click on the images and it'll show you the entire gallery and this is where your wireframe would basically be of what your website's going to look like so that's pretty cool i think this is a really powerful tool the ability to um, put in different types of sort of uh, comments on pdfs is something i've never even heard of before so it's pretty cool now let's just say you were doing a wireframe for a website, you were doing a quick mock-up of a website with the pages. Here's an example that I did with my personal website. So you could go ahead and click on the image. This one's an image, not a PDF. And you can see here, we've got the entire website once again. They can leave comments. 
Um, can we change the color? Right, and they can leave a color. You can even add in attachments if you have the professional plan. Come through, it all looks pretty good. And then if they wanted to change the pages, they could either click on the little button to navigate through the different pages of the project, or you could just click on the right arrow and it's gonna come through and actually change the different page. Once again, same thing, activity. You can uh, hide the comments if you wish. You've also got different bits and pieces and that's pretty much it. Once you're happy, click on approve. Are you sure you wanna approve it? Yes, this is all been done. And if you come out of it and actually come back to the dashboard, you will notice we have got the little tasks tab. If you click on that, then here is um, the sort of task that needs to be changed. Once again, you can resolve it and it's all pretty good. You've also got the project activity on the right. So it's nice and easy. So now you know how the tool works, I'm actually going to show you how to install it. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you the basics of Project Huddle. So once you first uh, install Project Huddle, you're going to want to go through the setup process. I believe I can actually reach it inside of here. So if I come to Advanced and I come down to Setup Wizard, this is what it's going to look like once you've installed um, Project Huddle. So first of all, welcome, it's been done. You put in your code for it to activate and it's good. So for this, I'm going to say I'm in. Next is going to be status. It's going to say a few things here. My WordPress limit is too low, yet it's still working, which is nice. Um, it's also got Lightspeed hosting. You'll also need to add in this particular um, cache exclusion. And then there's finally a new WordPress is uh, recommended for installation. I've put mine on a brand new subdomain, so it's all good. So I'm going to go to next. Now we've got our logo. So I've gone ahead and uploaded a logo. And the dark background logo is for the bottom bar. And if you come here, we've got light background logo. Um, depending if they have, I don't know, a light version where it swaps the things around, you can also add in the light logo there. So you wanna click on next. Then we have the email section. So what happens is once there's an activity, they're gonna actually get sent an email and it could be based on uh, these particular parameters. So you've got your name, your, your email you wanna use. Then you've got here the um, frequency in which you want to send them. So I'm, I've put don't send any emails out because I did it for a little bit and I was playing around with it. Like I was trying to do as many things as I could so I could see if there's any issues, things like that. And I got about 30 different emails. So I've changed just to don't send any automatically and instead I'd do the work and then if I was going to send it to a client, I'd send it out manually. And you also have the ability to send out a report so you can send out a daily report of what's been happening or a weekly summary depending on your needs uh, i'd probably do everything manually if it was me but it's entirely up to you how you want it to sort of work depends on your business then once you're finally done you have the option to join their facebook community and you can go ahead and start a new mock-up or a website so it's super easy so what i'm going to do is go back to the dashboard over here and I'm gonna show you how to add in a new client. So what you wanna do is come to project title on the left, then you've got the option of website or mockup, right? So mockup's gonna be the images you upload, the PDFs you upload, everything like that, and website's going to be an actual live website. So I'm gonna click on website, and we have here baby coo, and that is the website that I showed you earlier. So what I'm actually going to do is click on trash. I'm gonna delete it from both ends so I can show you the whole install process. So I'm gonna pause the video and delete it. Okay, so that has been done. Next, I'm gonna click on add site, and this is where you can put in your client's details. So I'm gonna put in the website. Once again, this is just a demo site so I can show you how it works. So slices3d.co, it's gonna say next and this is now the connect part is it a wordpress website or something else so i'm going to show you on a Word wordpress website so you have here the ability to add in the username and password and it's actually going to install it for you if you had a different type of website there's also a script where you can copy and paste but i'm going to choose the wordpress website installation so i'm going to put in the username the password like so and click on connect and install the child thing now it's going to open this little pop-up box here it's gone ahead to the client, uh, the project title client site plugin. You just click on install now and it's gonna install it. Click on activate plugin once it's installed and then choose who should comment, right? So this is where I went through in the beginning. You can choose who actually gets to see the dashboard. So I leave it for mainly administrator and editor. If you wanna leave it for all of the others, it's up to you, it depends on your project. You can also allow guests to comment, it's up to you. So I'm gonna click on save changes, that's all good. Now I'm just gonna close it and it's going to go ahead and ask to verify the installation. So I'm gonna click on verify and 
If for some reason it doesn't work, you should see a little thing pop up here. That's also completely fine. I'll show you a little workaround. It may be to do with your cache, something like that. What you can actually do is come back, go to connect once again, go to try connecting manually, copy this code here, okay? And then come to your WordPress website like so. I've just got a, another tab open and come down to plugins installed plugins then you've got here project huddle client site click on settings and connection and you can just paste it inside of here and click on save changes and now if i come to uh verify right i've pasted the code and it says here we've got our connection is good where everything's good to go so the last thing we want to do is add in a project member now when you add a member it should pop up here they'll also get sent an email asking to collaborate but basically once we bring back this website like so if i click on reload there is no toolbar or anything here just yet but now that i've refreshed it the toolbar is live and they can start going in and actually editing things so it's super easy so that's the basics of it now if you wanted to actually add in a login panel so if i went to the dashboard of the site it's just a login page. Now I've done this with Elementor, it's super easy to do. All I've done is chosen a Unsplash picture from um, the unsplash.com. So it's a royalty free one, put it in the background here, added in my logo and a little design by, and created a little WordPress form, a little Elementor form I should say. Super easy to do. But what I've done is if I put here um, the form fields, put small, everything like that, additional options. All I've done down here is redirect after login. And what I've created is a page called dashboard, right? So if one of the clients, once I give them this sort of login page, if they actually went to the login portal, after they log in, it's going to take them to a page called dashboard. Now to show you what the dashboard page looks like as well, this is a custom page that the clients can see. And once you add the users as well, you can make it so they don't see the toolbar. So it just looks like a nice little feed of what's actually happening. So you've got here activity. You've also got your mockups, which is all the websites that they've been invited to. And then you've got here the um, websites as well. It says auto draft here, but you can change it once you go into it um, in the dashboard to name it, whatever you want to call it. Now, just to let you know as well, once you go onto the page, once you've actually loaded it like so, you're going to have to install the pages to it. So if you click on the pages tab, you'll see there's nothing here at all yet, but you've got this little button, add this page. So you can choose which pages you want added to this project. So I'm gonna click on add this page. Just a few seconds, it's scraped all the metadata, which is cool. Now I can come to about us, right? Let's just say I wanna add this page. Click add this page and it will be added very nice and quickly. Click on testimonial. And once again, just click on add page. And now you can choose which pages want to be added. You can choose which pages don't need to be added. It all depends on the project that you're doing. So click on add this page. So it all looks good. Once again, you can change the URL and everything so it looks more user friendly and you're all ready to go. So once you give your client some logins or a place to actually register, they can come through, they can make live changes on the website and everything is going to flow from here. And in terms of the short code, if you wanted to know how to actually add in this dashboard short code, I personally went down to the get help place. There is an instructional tutorial on it on the website. I just am very impatient when it comes to this sort of thing. So I typed in dashboard short code, right? And clicked on search. And sure enough, this little thing here came, dashboard short code. And it comes down here and this is all it is so if i click on the dashboard page and click edit with elementor you will see it is just this tiny bit of code in an html code uh, element that's all it is and then it actually brings you this page now if i click on websites now you'll also see we've got more pages inside of it so it's all nice and easy to use so that's all you really need to know about Project Huddle, it's a really cool tool, but what I'm gonna do right now is jump behind the screen, just wanna talk about a few extra things.
Okay, so that was Project Huddle. Now, as you can see, it is very nice and easy to use. The user experience is amazing and it keeps everything nice and organized. Now, last year I created a 60 page website for a client and honestly, the lists of emails from all the changes that needed to be added was really doing my head in. If I had a tool like Project Huddle back then, it would have made everything so much easier. I would never miss any points that needed to be changed and everything would have run smoothly. Now, if you are a web developer, if you're a designer, I think this tool is a massive tool in your toolkit. Just the stress and the headaches of having to juggle what needs to be changed is enough to put you off the rails. So something like Project Huddle is going to save you a lot of effort. Now, once again, if you want to get Project Huddle, I have left a link in the description. There is usually a discount code that comes with it once you get started, so just to let you know it's there. But apart from that, that is my Project Huddle review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, click on subscribe. So many cool tutorials, reviews, and software coming out in the near future. That's it from me. I'll see you on the next video.